Thank you, Madam Chair. You know, where I come from, which was running a business for 37 years prior to getting here, investment was always the most important thing you had to consider. Uh, when you invest, there's a return on it, and if you don't do it well in business or government, you end up paying the price. Your competitors generally outmaneuver you in the long run. When we're looking at both NASA, National Science Foundation, um, you might be surprised, but I think we ought to be putting as many resources into it as we can. It's one of the few things that, even though it may not be tangible, it's very important, and sometimes it is very tangible as well, in terms of what it yields down the road. So I'm one that generally always thinks of the particulars, which I see uh, $23.27 billion uh, enacted fiscal year 21, 24.04, request 25. That's about as mild a request in terms of increases of anything I've seen since I've been here. It's in the context, though, that we're $30 trillion in debt. That's such a complicated subject. Uh, all I can tell you, it's not a great business plan to borrow your way into the future when a lot of it doesn't give you a true return on investment. I want to talk about, I think, what is even a more exis existential discussion, and that is our main geopolitical uh, competitor. So, Dr. Ponch, when it comes to the Chinese, uh, they're not um, apologetic. They're not even um, quite about it. They would want to replace us someday and do it, I think, by merit, according to maybe what they might think that might be. But in the meantime, I've observed them as being ones that uh, I don't know their handshake business partners. And if we do enable, invest more in uh, National Science Foundation or NASA, how are we sure that with their behavior, especially when you're maybe doing it to some extent where there's, even if it's not shared information, it could be extracted, how are we certain that we're going to do it in a way that uh, keeps us secure and doesn't aid the competition? And then, uh, Mr. Nelson, I'd like you to answer that same question as it uh, would apply to NASA. Go ahead. Thank you very much, Senator, for that question. Um, I, I often say research security research is research integrity. Research integrity is research security. So clearly we are, uh, before I get to the specific qu question about China, we are working with international partners who share our values who share our values of research integrity, transparency, openness, and also reciprocity. So we are working with partners who emphasize that, and we are building those partnerships. So one of the things that NSF did uh, two years ago, and I was at that time in the National Science Board, is we commissioned a, a security group called Jason, and we asked them to look at the problem so that it is not just an internal thing only, but an external group of experts looking at it and giving us advice in terms of how do we move forward in research security. And we are pretty much following the guidelines that have been given to us by Jason, of course, in consultation with many other constituencies. One of the principal recommendations that was made was to appoint a chief officer for research security strategy and policy, whose job it is to every day wake up and think about research security in its, all, in its many forms to make sure that we are protecting those things that needs to be protected and set up the policies that needs to be set and put in place for that to be you know, exercised in its fullest form. And I'm very happy to say that that person reports directly to me, and that was part of the recommendation. But more importantly, yeah. I feel confident that in this case, especially with what we've observed over the last uh, decade or so, especially uh, more recently, that it will be foolproof, it will not be breached if we're making these investments to where it would be nothing more than uh, giving them information that would end up hurting us somehow in the long run. Senator, this is where I think the partnership with agencies, and that's what we're working right now. NSF is closely partnering with this chief officer, with the intelligence agencies, with other agencies like NASA, with the Department of Energy, and all these agencies because it's an all-of-government approach. In fact, NSF co-leads with the Office of Science Technology Policy with the Department of Energy. And, 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 and NIH to make sure that the policy that we are putting in place is consistent across the board for all researchers in institutions that we essentially invest in. And so I can tell you that we have constant conversations about this. In fact, I will tell you since we met last time, we have developed an analytics software 
that can actually look at where people are supposed to be declaring their conflicts of interest and things of that nature or commitment, that they are surfaced and we are able to then make sure that people are ensuring that they are declaring their conflicts uh, as, it, as the case may be. But more importantly, the work happens in the institutions, academic institutions. So we are partnering with the academic institutions to make sure that the policies that we are putting in place are going to be you know, essentially implemented. But in, the, in, 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 terms of the, in terms of taking care of any breaches, we work very closely with the Office of Inspector General. As you know, it's an independent entity from NSF, and we make sure that we take care of any such situation. Th thank you, because it looks like you're uh, well aware of the potential of what might happen. Uh, Mr. Nelson, would you weigh in? Uh, Senator, your question about China, I, I uh, have made no bones about, uh, in response to Senator uh, Shaheen, uh, they are simply not transparent. Uh, they have not cooperated. Uh, we have given them ample opportunities, and I won't repeat what is already on the record for the committee. Uh, uh, we would welcome that, uh, but uh, we would be very guarded in our dealings uh, with uh, the Chinese. But thus far, the, all the opportunities that we have given them, and the example that I gave was that life was threatened on the face of the earth, with the uncontrolled entry of their first stage of their rocket when they put up their space station. Uh, not only uh, had they not saved enough fuel for a controlled reentry, and thank goodness it came down in the uh, Indian Ocean, but it could have come down in Europe and it could have come down in Saudi Arabia. And, uh, and not only had they not done that, but they refused to give us coordinates and information about the track. We fortunately had our own information about the track, so we were pretty on top of it. But it's just another illustration. Uh, and it's such a contrast to what we've been doing with the Russians ever since the Soviet Union in 1975, uh, where the civilian space program has always had a cooperation. Uh, to this point now and uh, going forward, why this is such an international space program where the Japanese and the European Space Agency and, and now the UAE uh, are all participating with us not only on the space station but as we go to the moon and the gateway, which is like a space station that will orbit the moon. Well, thank you for being uh, vigilant and alert to the uh, potential. Thank you.